So let's get nerdy about one type of rope material that is being used in more and more of our sports gear, Dyneema. It's the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or Humphy for short. Known as the world's strongest and lightest fibers, it is 15 times stronger than steel, yet floats on water. Dyneema is the brand name by DSM, who's in the Netherlands, that invented this stuff 30 years ago. Now Dyneema is in a lot of our gear. On cams, you'll find the slings are oftentimes Dyneema, and even the black diamond ultralights, the end cable where the cable used to be, is now Dyneema. Dyneema climbing slings for alpine draws and stuff. There are soft shackles that we use in a lot of our slackline highline rigging because it's as bomber as a shackle, it can be tri-loaded, and it's super, super strong for how lightweight it is. And we have an episode coming out soon where we test Dyneema anchors that cavers use in order to keep uh, their overall weight lighter. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the 12 braid ropes that are made out of Dyneema, and more specifically, the splices, and even more specifically, just the taper on the end. Now stick with me, because this is actually very interesting. It's important for you to know that this is very slippery. It's as slippery as Teflon. It's got a coefficient of 0 0.04. It also, being very static, does not like to be tied in a knot. It can reduce the strength of your Dyneema rope by 70 plus percent if you tie it in a knot because the bend radius is putting more pressure on the outer fibers than the inside ones. Something like a climbing rope is a little bit more stretchy and so it can handle that a little bit better even though knots still technically reduce it 50%. But that's okay for that application, sort of. Or I guess there's always an exception. That's a button knot. But the tails of the button knot are fed back down through this, and then this noose goes over the head, and that's a soft shackle, and there's four strands. These are strong. So just go with me. Don't tie knots in this. Well, if you can't tie a knot to it, how are you supposed to connect anything to it? Well, it's called splicing. If you don't know what splicing is, it's where you take the end of this, and you shove it down the center of the rest of it, and you have an eye at the end of that process. And what's mind blowing is it's just the finger trap it creates is what's holding all the pressure. However, being super slippery, it has to be buried long enough in order to not come out. Otherwise, it just slips right out. A FID, or what you're supposed to bury this with, is supposed to be 21 diameters. You're supposed to do three and a half of those. So for this skinny rope, I'm gonna need to do about 200 and something millimeters in order for that finger trap to be grabbing good enough in order to be spliced at full strength. And splices can retain 90%, if not 100% of the quoted strength of a material. So in this video, we're going to test just the taper or where we reduce it to be skinnier and skinnier as it goes down the Dyneema. Now you can't just cut this stuff and bury it. You have to taper it. And so that means you have to unravel a single strand at a certain uh, distance, cut that, do it again down here, cut that, and get it to gradually get down to almost nothing. So as it goes from being fat, having another rope inside of it, to no longer having that end of the rope, it has to be very gradual. Otherwise you have the same problem as you would if there was a knot in it. And then it would break lower. But how much lower? We're gonna find that out today. So to eliminate some of the variables in this test, we're gonna use only one type of Dyneema, and that is the, the premium stuff for Marlowe, or the D12 Max 99. It's manufactured using bio-based SK99, which is more eco-friendly, the highest strength, and the minimal creep. We're using six millimeter diameter, and Marlowe says that it's 5,440 kilograms of average breaking strength, or 53 kilonewtons. And a splice, is supposedly going to retain all that strength. In our next Dyneema video that comes out, we are also testing all the qualities uh, compared to each other. It's SK60, SK75, SK78, all those SKs or qualities, we kind of put up against each other and even tested the stuff you find on Amazon and eBay. And that was uh, not the results you might think we got. You'll probably learn a lot if you watch that. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that. And we're gonna start with no taper or a blunt cut end. Now, none of these samples have any sewn thread in them, and that's not really needed to keep the strength. That's in order to keep the splice where you want it when you're not using it. So you understand the context of what we're doing. We're pull slow testing it in our slack snap slow puller machine with a hydraulic, and we're connecting this directly to soft shackles because some of the eyes aren't very big, and sometimes Dyneema is so strong that it will bend a quick link or a bow shackle before it breaks. 
here we have the no taper first and you can see how much it goes from skinny to bulgy quickly putting a lot more strain right here on the Dyneema. After we keep it at four kilonewtons for about 30 to 60 seconds, we will finally pull it and see what they break at. And it always breaks uh, 10 or 11 of the strands out of 12. And it broke where the taper ended here. So stiff. Ugh. So apparently the MBS of this stuff is 12,000 pounds. My hydraulic only goes up to 11,000 pounds before I need to add a two to one to the system. Since I like to show you the process of how we do this, let me show you something interesting. So this is my slack snap slow pull machine. I just put this on the top so I have a place to work. And this is a slack line holding the hydraulic. Now to do the two to one, I fix one side of my 9 16th Dyneema rope here. And since we're on the subject of tapers, I bet you can see here, I don't really taper this thing uh, because I'm constantly changing it. I buried this taper a lot more, so it goes through my pulley and directly into here. Otherwise, I lose throw or the distance that I can pull with my hydraulic. This thing only goes up to 49 kilonewtons or about 11,000 pounds. This is to keep that thing from recoiling. And now I have to keep this chunk of metal from recoiling when our next sample breaks. So there's a lot that goes into how not to destroy things that you're not trying to destroy. And this keeps that stuff from flying. So I didn't want to eliminate one of the load cells because I like having redundant load cells when uh, the samples took so much work to prepare. So now let's pull the second sample and see what happens. Substantially less than what we got last time. I'm so glad I spent all that time setting up the two to one. So it feels warm. Interesting that it did not break two of them. Usually it's just one. Now that is an interesting result. I guess our bend radius isn't good enough. What's interesting is this is not even stiff. Like none of it's stiff. It feels very soft. I think learning that our bend radius is too small is actually worse than no taper is actually quite interesting because I connect this to all sorts of things. So these first three results is the part I was most interested in. No taper reduced it down 13 to 20% lower than the average braking strength at 46, 42, and 43 kilonewtons. We got that range. What's interesting is the I and how you connect it and the bend radius the I sees is as important as the taper, but we're supposed to be getting full strength out of this stuff and we're not, so we're going to see if it gets better the more we're tapering it. So about five days ago from filming this, I posted the big wall course has been filmed in a funny little skit. I think I'm funny. And at the end, I asked for a thousand patrons because of all the stuff we're trying to do. And in just five days, I got uh, about 150 new patrons, which is, I only had 273 at the time. Um, overwhelming. I am so grateful. I thought it was going to take me a lot longer to get to the goal. We're still not at the thousand patron goal, but I wanted to say thank you for anybody who uh, did sign up and who does sign up between now and even publishing this because a thousand patrons giving $1 per episode is literally going to change the game for us. We're going to be able to post a lot better videos. I'm going to be able to have editors and ghostwriters or proofreaders and even cut it up into short form content for those who just want the quick and dirty on Instagram. But I don't live on the donations. Um, I'm very transparent where all the money goes and you can click on the patron link to see all that. So now we're going to test whether or not if you diagonally cut the end of the splice instead of properly tapering it, if that is super good enough. Now we've got diagonal cut, which you can see tapers down more gently, but right there is the taper not a perfect taper by any means and we've got our new bend radius what on earth happened are you kidding me we broke the eye again instead of where it meets from here to the taper in here so you can see inside of here this is the diagonal taper it's not very tapered and it was strong as you can see here that it's breaking at the top of the eye where the bend is this space here is supposed to be about three times more than what you're putting in it so at about three quarter inch 
and is what we have. So we would want this to be mm, about two, two and a half inches. So you don't want to take something like this giant pen and have a sharp angle that the taper goes into. You want to have something that's gentle. Every Everything you do with Dyneema, you, you don't want it to be a sharp. So you can see here that the angle is nice and gentle and goes into a taper. And in this case, we just have uh, diagonal taper, but it's still, it broke here at the top of the loop because the distance from here to here on the outside of these fibers is very different than the inside of these fibers. And where it bends here is where it's going to be found weaker since this material doesn't stretch at all. And so it's showing that the taper is not making much of a difference. Three. Well, that is very interesting. Oh, well, look at that. This is the splice right here. And it did not break here. And here is basically plastic rope. Okay, so, well, that's interesting how it pulls the one strand apart. Ah, you can see this, you can see this strand right here is tight all the way through. And that's what makes that spiral in that strand. So now what we have here is actually two strands melted together. Anyways. Um, there are two strands here. So 10 of the 12 strands snap. And because those stay in the system and this recoils, it looks like DNA. So 43 to 50 kilonewtons is quite a range. And you can see that eye is moving on the pin, but even on that last test where it did move and you would think that friction would cut the eye, it still broke at the taper. And another interesting graph is that 64% of you are not subscribed, but luckily that can be changed. Anyways, let's see if Marlowe's specified taper gives us full strength. We have our Marlowe taper. We've got a nice distance here. We've got a nice bend radius and it comes down and I cannot even feel where it starts and stops. I can feel this gradually growing, but this is a proper taper based on Marlow specs. Well, this is so interesting. First of all, it broke where it was tapered. Okay, so that is just interesting at a lot of levels. This is scrunched very different than the DNA style, which is more like up here. The eye has not changed up here. The eye over here got real tight because of the way it DNA scrunched here. You can see that broke. I am excited about that. We got higher than MBS. Ooh, we got some serious DNA going on. Got some action happening down here. You got the one strand instead of two. We got single strand. Single strand made a nice helix. This feels soft and supple because it relaxed and spring back. So this is the recommended taper by Marlo. And it broke, it obviously did not break here. This is the taper. It broke here where the taper ended and it broke higher than its MBS. So 56, 54, and 59 kilonewtons is all more than the 53 kilonewton average breaking strength. And we're still kind of having issues with the way it moves on the pin, but they're all breaking still at the taper. Even properly tapered, that is where it breaks, albeit above the average breaking strength. So a properly buried simple eye splice only holds under tension. As soon as you take the tension off, it'll come right out. And so there is a different type of splice called a Brummel splice, where you kind of zigzag it into itself to where even not under tension, it won't come out. It doesn't require stitching like a simple eye splice would require. But that's an extra bend in the Dyneema. And so I've always wondered if that reduces the strength. So let's see if it breaks at the Brummel or if it continues to break at the taper above full strength. You can see here how it goes in and then through itself. And this taper tapers very gradually. I cannot feel where it starts and stops. I do feel, well, I can feel right there a little bit of it starting, but it's very gradual. You can see here it goes in and then up and inside. So it's locked, technically it doesn't need stitches to not come undone when it's not being loaded. Obviously when it's loaded, you're never gonna get that. 
So right now, this is at 3.5 kilonewtons. I had it up to four. Stiff as a rail. It looks like we have two strands that survived out of the 12. It looks like it broke in the taper. The Brummel seems to be doing just fine. The back of this seems to be doing just fine. Got the helix all over again, and everything's looking dandy. It looks like we've got two strands here. We've got a mild helix going. We got a taper break. The locked Brummel doesn't seem to be causing any issues. This is a nice helix looking good here. You can feel the temperature there. That's interesting. It did not break in the Brummel. It broke at the back of the, the eye. Very soft and supple as opposed to very, very stiff like normal. So 56, 56, and 53 kilonewtons is at or above our average braking strength. And the way that last test rubbed the eye, broke it at the eye, albeit it was higher than the original test that we had that problem with. So apparently Brummel splices are bomber according to our massive data set of three tests. What happens if you don't splice the Brummel? What if you just do the Brummel lock and leave the tail? Well, I was curious. And so uh, like two years ago, I pulled on that and it sorta undid itself at 4.4 kilonewtons until the heat from it and collapsing on itself broke it at 13.55 kilonewtons, which is a lot less than whatever that thing was rated for. But here's the weird part. Tuffelberger shows a Brummel splice and a super short tail. So does the length of the berry matter? So John spliced it according to the PDF that Tuffelberger puts out there, which is all in the description if you wanna see it. And we got some interesting results. Here it grows right about here, but I can barely feel it. It's a very short taper as opposed to the other ones. And it's about the same distance here in the middle as all the other samples we did. Very, very warm. I can barely touch it, it's so hot. You can kind of see how the plastic melts a little bit. It basically undid itself. This literally wasn't buried enough. And wow, now that's an interesting chart. That is when it's worth having charts. What we've got here is I can visually see it's approximately to about right here. So that right there is about six inches of taper approximately. And we have less than the ideal like two and a half or three inches space from back here to here so it's not as gradual as it should be and then back here we have approximately the diameter uh, three quarter inch diameter for six millimeter or quarter inch so like everything's pretty good here you can feel the taper start from about maybe here fully is done tapering here and it's fully embedded here and right now we are at basically a thousand pounds of force That is so warm, it's practically burning my hand right now. It's very, very shiny right here. That's too hot to hold. You can barely touch it. Technically quite a bit more, but it's not 50 plus. I mean, that graph is sick. Uh, so those came out about half of the average braking strength. And what's interesting to me is the length that you're technically bearing that thing, according to the instructions, is the amount it's supposed to be tapered on all the other instructions. Like one third of a three and a half fid length berry is you tapering it. And so are you supposed to just not taper it or are you, is, I don't know, I don't have an answer. All I know is it slipped and that makes for a really good video. I'm sure they have a reason. And I'm curious what the, uh, you guys let me know. Yeah, I don't know what to say about this. Now what's great about our written content that supplements this video form is I can update that if Tufelberger or you give me a really good 
explanation on why it says you can do that or that we completely misunderstood the instructions. And all of that will be in the descriptions, including their instructions and our blog, and we will update it as we get information. So make sure you go check that out if this has been posted for more than a day. Because I can't exactly change this video after I hit publish. This thing that looks like this. Click that as you go to our next video.